Achieving the vision of seamless business-to-business -business integration and collaboration isn't easy. It requires tying diverse replenishment systems and fulfillment systems together and developing the trust required to make those processes work across boundaries. It also requires bringing together diverse companies with varying degrees of technical sophistication and having all of the right technology pieces in place to support it. Our Lightwell team members know this all too well, in that B2B integration and collaboration initiatives, there can be so many unknowns, and when working outside the four walls of an organization, there's a lack of control. In fact, a recent IBM survey said their ex external business communities are vital their, to their success, yet 86% reported barriers that prevent full electronic automation with B2B partners. A majority of these companies continue to rely on email attachments to exchange business documents with some of their partners. And for good reason, a majority of them are concerned about the security of this approach. Brian, according to your research, what are some of the top challenges com companies are facing with respect to their B2B integration initiatives? So it's interesting, uh, just in, in looking at the statistics, um, that, that you know, 86% feel like they're not really you know, well connected. I mean, that, that's very telling right there, um, particularly when they need their partners. There's no question about it. I'd say across the board, um, the cost of technology solutions, um, for some of the reasons that we, we've discussed, um, is a barrier. For example, can I afford to have the person back to, I have to manage 10 formats. Can I afford to carry 10 experts on my staff in IT mm -hmm. just to support those? You know, is that really manageable? I may have two or three that my primary customers are involved with, but can I really afford to get all 10? So that's maybe a question we'll come back to. Um, so, you know, trying to manage this in-house or partnering is really, really the discussion. And betting on the future technology when you're hiring is, you know, I'm guessing. Right. Do I really know what's going to win out? You know, is it, is it going to be X or is it going to be Y? And so once you've got the employee, if it turns out to be the wrong one, right. you know, nobody wants that experience, okay? So that's a, that's a challenge right there. So having all the in-house resources um, is, is just almost unmanageable in many cases. The role of IT in this case is much more uh, as an advisor. You know, where is technology going? What do we need to be prepared for? And so, you know, it's not a one-size-fits-all recommendation. Everybody's got their own level of um, what's my problem, where am I strong, where am I weak? So I wouldn't say that you should always do this or always do that. But the point is, the approach is, should I be thinking about this in-house or should I be partnering with them, such as yourselves, um, you know, to, to actually help me with my B2B collaboration and integration challenges. Um, the variety of multiple standards, um, are, you know, there's just more than companies can afford. So, um, the the IT staff and resources, I would say, is also um, just having the in-house knowledge and, and understanding of what do I need to do with partners. For example, I, I'd say traditionally it could have been a technology type of solution, particularly inside my four walls. Mm -hmm. As soon as I get outside my four walls. Now, it's, in many cases, I'm dealing with very small suppliers, small right. IT staffs, and it's not just about the technology. It's almost about customer service. Right. You know, I really need to do a lot of hand-holding out there. So the skill set that I may have had in-house to be able to handle the technology side may not be the same skill set I need going outside the four walls. You almost need a, a quasi-sales engineer to sort of work with them and get them up to speed. And again, they may have the challenges of how do I serve my other customers in addition to you? Right. So you gotta recognize their constraints. Right. And, and I think- Not one to the, mention the time that's involved Yeah, and the that. time involved in all this, okay? Do they have the capability in-house to handle this? Um, and, and the point would be is that because they've got multiple standards, you know, throwing this over the wall, you know, and demanding compliance. If I'm Walmart, as an example, I'm not picking on Walmart, <laughs> but being the giant in a, in, a, in a value chain, I can maybe do some of that. Mm -hmm. But most companies not, are not in that position when they're dealing with their integration and collaboration. So I think it, the skill set required even in IT isn't just about the technical side. It's about how do I engage beyond my four walls. So I would bring that maybe to light and say um, those, those are the, the the two key pieces. Multiple formats, do I partner, and then, you know, what's the nature of the skill set I do need? Uh -huh. you know, that would be, those would be the two big things I'd 
highlights. So, so the, and, you know, that's going beyond the four walls when we talk about that. But I would say that, that recognize also that uh, managing, you know, with the ERPs in-house, you know, and integrating these partners and, and you know, uh, the suppliers into what I've already got. And there's a, multiple ways to do this. There, there could be the one-to-one -one for my big customer, for mm -hmm. example. And I may want to do that. I've got a, a straight pipe back and forth. You know, that makes sense. But where I've got multiple trading partners where there's a community and, and it's a rich marketplace, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's a, a one-to-many where I'm, in, I'm engaged in that marketplace and I can connect with many suppliers. And then there's the open networks where it's maybe many-to-many, -many, where I'm mm -hmm. one. This could be you know, much more in the commodity-based type products, okay, where mo many people are in involved, let's say in office supplies as an example, okay, everybody in all industries, okay, but there's many, many people out there. So a many-to-many -many approach might work there. But so that you have to look at really what serves the purpose and what serves my business need. In other words, you just don't want to say one way is the only way I'm going to go integrate and, and, and collaborate. But the other side of it is is that I would I would say that uh, what you also see on the IT side is that uh, with the ERP solutions is that there's an underserved need on the operations side. Mm -hmm. And if you think back to Y2K, um, companies implemented you know, ERPs because they, they felt like they had to. One of the first things that happens in an ERP is that you've got to get the financials in place. Mm -hmm. One of the, you know, because of life, it's the way it occurred. Uh, because you have to do that, in many cases, um, the the implementation team, you know, getting just the, the structure and the finances in place took two years, okay? Well, guess what? The project team sort of leaves after right. two years, okay? <laughs> and the value coming from some of these implementations really happens when you get to the operation side. So I would tell you that there's an underserved need to solve some of these problems on the operation side simply because of the way things evolved, okay? Right. That the, we didn't get to some of those key problems. And so there's a little bit of I have to clean up some of the inside stuff before I can get to some of the outside stuff. And they find that some of the operations tools aren't in place to sort of facilitate and, and leverage the collaboration integration when I get it. So it's one thing, let's say, to know that I've got visibility upstream. There's 100 widgets coming on Tuesday. That's great. Is that good or is that bad? Right. Well, <laughs> if I don't have a plan, I really don't know where I stand. And, you know, and even if, if they're on schedule, is that still okay? Mm -hmm. So there's those kinds of questions to be asked, and you've got to have those kinds of alerts, I'd say, right. connecting your integration to your ERP system. So um, there's, there's some you know, hidden, hidden pitfalls, I would say. Uh, one is just in how I go about it. You know, two would be in terms of working with the small suppliers, three being the IT staff and what skills are required, and then fourth is do I need to do some cleanup on my own? So right. bring that up. So what approaches do you recommend for companies to overcome some of these challenges? Sure. I, I would say first, uh, companies really need to, as I said, you know, determine whether to solve these issues internally or, or, or whether should they, should they partner, okay, mm -hmm. with someone such as yourself, like Lightwell. Um, with respect to a shortage of IT resources, company chooses to fight for the resources internally, um, you know, you, you, challenge, you, you, you face the challenge of picking the right technology when you do that. And I think that's the concern. So, um, you know, make sure that, that you, you're thinking clearly when you do that. In terms of insufficient internal knowledge for onboarding and integrating partners, as I said, you know, the skills could be very different in terms of when I get these resources, don't just think of the technology side. Uh -huh. think, think of the ability to work with people side right. when, I, when I go at that. Um, so th I'd say the benefit of partnering is I don't have to wait for people to get up to speed. That's the other side. I can, I can say, look, I need somebody who's on the latest and greatest, and I can, I can, when I partner, you know, I can have instant access to that, that level of capability and you know, doing the collaboration. And it could be, you know, I have no need except for this particular marketplace, and I've got to figure this out. Well, partnering makes a lot of sense. You know, you people don't do everything. Not everyone is 100% vertically integrated. Right. That's not true in any business anymore. It's like ADP. Everybody outsources their checks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, same idea. There's there's technology here that, that I really should outsource. Probably. You know, there's not worth investing in it. So, um, relying on the partner that has experience of doing that. You know, it's going to really help me solve a lot of the, you know, the supplier and customer satisfaction issues I'm going to face, and it can be a significant advantage. Thank you, Brian. 
And an important step before a company can determine what to do next is to assess their current situation and get a solid understanding of where they stand today. Mm -hmm. We'll explore this in our next segment. Mm -hmm.